All right, so now we've dealt with strong acids and strong bases and weak acids and weak bases. There's one more case um, where we need to be able to understand and be able to calculate what the pH would be. We need, need to be able to understand how the equilibrium plays out. And that is um, what we're going to call a buffer. And a buffer, buffer is just very, very simply just a mixture of um, a weak acid and its conjugate base or a weak base and its conjugate acid. Not dealing with um, strong acids, strong bases here. We're looking at weak acids, conjugate base, strong, uh, weak base, strong uh, conjugate acid. All right, and when we have a mixture of those two things, um, how do we handle the pH? And, and the, the thing that are special uh, about these that we're going to find in, in just a, a couple of minutes, um, where we're going to talk about a little more in depth in just a couple of minutes, is that. Um, you know, in a buffer, a buffer is a solution when you, we have this situation where we have a weak acid, weak acid in its conjugate base in solution. Weak acid, a uh, weak acid in its conjugate base. Um, though a solution like that will tend to resist a change in pH. Um, and different weak acids and their conjugate base are going to produce different pH ranges in which it's going to it's going to hold. Um, so, uh, how do we find the pH of those? It's actually going to turn out to be quite simple. All right. Um, it's not going to be the most complicated thing you're going to like whenever you have a buffer, except I would tell you that students tend to really struggle um, being able to recognize buffers. And it all comes back to, can you tell what's an acid in its conjugate base or a base in its conjugate acid? Um, and so, you know, it's special because the pH doesn't change even when we add some acid and base. There is a limit to that. There's something we call a buffer capacity where we can overload a buffer by adding too much acid or too much base, but buffers will hold pH as long as we don't go crazy adding the amount of acid or the amount of base. So if there are just small amounts of acid or base that are produced, this will hold the pH nice and constant. Um, for all of you that are biology students, you know all about the idea that your blood or our blood is buffered at a certain pH that's optimal for particular reactions, chemical reactions to occur. Um, and it will hold that, it will hold that pH fairly constant because the amount of acid that's produced or, or base that's produced in a particular reaction isn't enough to really change that equilibrium chemistry um, between the carbonate um, species that are in that are in your blood. And so it holds them at a relatively constant pH. Um, that's not the only kind, almost anything you do in biology has to be buffered. Um, chemistry isn't, isn't necessarily always like that. There are a lot of reactions where they're not really all that dependent on the pH. Um, and so you're not always having to buffer, to buffer things, or we can get away with buffering things in different ways that don't involve a buffer. We can hold the pH constant by using just a strong acid or a strong base. Um, and so, you know, like I said, the most important buffer for us is probably the one in blood that's due to the presence of carbonic acid and bicarbonate. Yes, that's the same bicarbonate that you would use in baking. It comes in the great big orange bottle, says, or orange, orange box, says Arm and Hammer. Um, uh, baking, uh, baking soda, uh, it's, that's just sodium bicarbonate. All right, and so we have carbonic acid, which is dissolved carbon dioxide. And we have bicarbonate, which is the, um, the conjugate base of carbonic acid. Those two things are dissolved in our blood, and they hold the pH fairly constant around a pH 7 to 7.6, somewhere in that range. Now, how do we handle calculating what the pH would be of a buffer solution? Well, we're going to use something called the henderson hasselbach And this is so much simpler than going through the whole ice table thing to calculate you know, equilibrium concentrations. It turns out that you can do it that way. It works out to be on, you know, essentially the same thing, um, but you're going to like this a whole lot better. And in the henderson hasselbach or the henderson hasselbach uh, uh, um, relationship, the pH is equal to something that we're going to call the pKa, we'll talk about that in a second, plus the log of the concentration of base or conjugate base in the solution over the concentration of acid or conjugate acid in the solution. So base over acid, the pKa, um, pKa is just simply minus log of the Ka, the equilibrium constant for the particular acid that we're dealing with. 
Um, and the same way the pH is minus log the concentration of H plus or H3O plus, the pKa is minus the log of Ka. Now, that might tell you something about what that little p means. It means minus log of something. And so we can have the we could have a p molecular weight if we wanted to, which would mean the minus log of the molecular weight. Um, so that's what that little p is telling us. So if you see pKa, that means minus log of the Ka. And if we use that equation, simply just plug everything in, it works out to where we can calculate the pH knowing the conjugate concentration of the conjugate acid and base pair in that solution. So <clears throat> here's sort of a summary of the different ways before we go through a, an example problem that we can use to calculate the pH of a solution. And this is going to summarize, this is going to be the end of the pH stuff. More of a little bit, we're going to talk about titration, um, but not a lot. Uh, where when you have weak acid, you've got to use the ice chart to calculate the pH because you calculate the concentration of H plus at equilibrium, take the minus log to get the pH. If it's a weak base, you still have to use your ice chart, but here we're calculating pOH first, and then from there we end up at pH because remember with the base, we end up with a certain amount of hydroxide solution uh, in solution, and we then use that to calculate the pOH. For a strong acid, we know strong acids dissociate completely. They give us H plus in solution. We can then use that to calculate the pH. Strong base gives us hydroxide in solution because strong bases are all hydroxide. So when they dissolve and make this solution, it produces hydroxide in solution. And we take the minus log of that to find the pOH. And then we know the pH plus the pOH have to equal 14 because we're in water. When we have a mixture of conjugate acid and base, we're simply going to go straight to the henderson hasselbalch equation, and we're going to calculate pH directly. Those are the five cases that we have. Those are the five that you're going to be responsible for. So how do we go through and use a problem like this? I'm going to put the board up, or the screen up, and I'm, that way I can write directly on the board. And so in this case, What's the pH of blood if it contains 0 0.0020 molar carbonic acid? That's H2CO3. That's the acid form. And 0 0.025 molar bicarbonate. That's the conjugate base form. If the, the Ka of carbonic acid is 4.2 times 10 to the minus 7. And again, we're going to go straight to the henderson hasselbalch equation, which is the pH equals the pKa plus the log of the base form over the acid form. In this case, carbonic acid, bicarbonate. All right. But what we need to know is, we need to know what the pKa. So I would first go through and determine the pKa, where the pKa is the minus the log of the Ka. And so the pKa is minus the log of 4.2 times 10 to the minus 7th. And I don't know that in my head, but I have calculated to be 6.38. So far, so good. Now we can go through and, and plug everything into the henderson hasselbalch equation because we have everything that we need. pKa is 6.38. 3.8 plus the log of the concentration of the base form, which is bicarbonate, 0 0.025 molar, and the concentration of the acid form, the carbonic acid, 0 0.0020 molar. Molarity crosses out, gives us a unitless number, um, and then we end up with the pH equals 6.38 plus the log of 12.5, what that works out to be, 6.38 plus 1.097, which is the log of 12.5 for a pH 7.47, which was exactly in that range as 7.48, sorry. 
misread my answer sheet, my problem sheet. Um, 7.4a. So that tells us that the pH is going to be right within that range where we expected it would be. Um, it buffers our pH just slightly above neutral, so just very slightly basic. Um, okay, that's really buffers, all right? There are different ways um, to do this. You might be asked for different things in the equation, but you know, generally, if you recognize it's a buffer in acid and it's conjugate base, we jump right to Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So that's buffers.